May your choices reflect your hope, not your fears. That is a quote from Nelson Mandela. I think a lot of preppers and a lot of preparedness and just people in general, one of their biggest concerns out there is that our society will reach a certain point where it will suddenly be driven. Their choices will be driven by their fears. And that's when the buying panic will start. That's when uh, choices of government will become increasingly worse and more authoritarian. That's a big concern out there. And as we look out across the landscape, uh, something that has kind of grabbed my attention in the last few days, and it kind of came out in the, the video this morning, is it's, it's, not, it's not even the preppers primarily that are doom and gloom out there. What I'm hearing is that in the United States particularly, and uh, I can't speak so much for the other parts of the world quite as much, but it seems like the society at large, at least here in the United States, has internalized this, this stress, this conflict. There is a darkness that has settled down across the United States. And it's this oppressive weight that seems to be weighing on everybody. You go to the store and you see people that are just really short-tempered. People are flipping out about the littlest things. Things that used to be no problem whatsoever are becoming bigger and bigger issues. You see this in organizations such as businesses and churches and it seems everybody's burned out. We hear that a lot in the prepper community and, and sometimes we don't get out quite as much as uh, uh, elsewise, but... It's not, it's not just the preppers. It's not just the preparedness folks. It's not just the homesteaders. Um, in fact, I'd almost say that, that our communities are more full of hope, more driven by hope, than a lot of communities out there that I'm seeing. Now, there's some communities out there. There's large groups of people that are pretending uh, that all is well and that there is no problem. But I'm seeing them become more embittered more concerned, more confused. Whereas in the preparedness community, we channel that, that the anxiety, that fear, those concerns into action. We know kind of what we ought to do and we can channel our energies that way. But I think the society at large is feeling that same stress, but they have no outlet. They feel powerless. What to do? What can be done? They see the world devolving around them and there's just no alternative that they can see. They're such slaves to the system, they know no other way. So, they're burning out. And the answer seems to be more about hiding and drugs, alcohol. Just, these addictions seem to be just going off the chart. When we see what uh, drug abuse is happening in the United States, it is dramatically up. And when we start talking about mental health issues out there, they're exploding. Um, the Gen Zers and the young people of today are the most stressed and most incapable of handling that stress of any generation in a very long time. There's a great darkness that has settled across the United States and is settling across the world. And the answer to that, and the most important prepping item, the most important trading item that you can have, is hope. Without hope, there's nothing. H how do you have hope? What, what is hope? Like, that's a nice catchphrase, but let's get specific. Let's get down to brass tacks. What is it that wakes you up in the morning and says, there's hope for today? There's hope for this year. There's hope for the next decade. Because if you don't have hope, what's the sense in doing anything? A vision. Hope is having a vision. A at least a possible outcome that is preferable to where we are now, right? This You have to at least have some possibility out there and say, well, it's possible that things will get better in this way or that way. If you don't have that, 
if you're just like, I don't see any way in which things will get better. Now, I'm not talking about like hope for the economy. Like, I don't have much hope for the economy, right? I have hope for Steve. I believe that Steve has some bright days ahead. Now, those may mean me working my tail off here uh, on my property trying to grow food for myself and struggling to survive, but I believe that there will be meaning and purpose in that, and I believe that as I become a better person uh, and develop relationships with people at a deeper level and get to meet new people and interact with them, I believe that that, I believe that those days will be good days. There will be good moments ahead. And ultimately, spiritually speaking, I, I look forward to uh, spending eternity in, in a place called heaven uh, with, my, with my Lord and Savior Jesus. But you, you have to have a vision, right? If there isn't even a possibility on your radar of something good on the horizon, it may be very far off on the horizon. And, and sometimes you can be driven by this outlandish hope when, when you look at uh, prisoner of war, uh, prisoners of war that escaped, uh, they knew that they had very long odds, but yet they pressed on and they persevered and were inspired by them. They didn't necessarily have a certainty that what they were trying to accomplish would be accomplished, but what they did know was that they had this vision for how things could be better. So first you need vision. The second thing is you need an assurance you need some sort of <laughs> belief that 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 there's either some force at work for your good or whether there is um, some possibility that things will get better. It needs to be probable, right? Um, you need to believe that the, the energy and effort that you're going to have to expend to get there is going to be worth it. It's going to pay it off in the end, right? So... What is your hope? What is, what is the, the, the hope, uh, what is the vision that is uh, fueling that hope? What do you see in the future that, that drives you to believe that all the effort that you're putting forward is worth it? Perhaps you're seeing your, your family sitting around a candle uh, in the dark, eating food. <laughs> even in the darkest days. Getting to see your kids grow up. See who they'll become. Perhaps it's to see the people that you will be able to help. The new relationships that you're able to build in the future. Perhaps it is this vision for rebuilding or reclaiming your country. Maybe building your own little country. I don't know. But you need to have some sort of vision. What is your purpose? I talk about this a lot because you can stockpile all the stuff you want. You can grow the garden. You can do all that. But, but you need to have this hope. And not only that, but you need, to be able to, you need to be able to communicate this to others. Because other people around you need hope. We talk about that a lot here about, um, you know, how do you get loved ones and friends and family members on to preparing for dark times ahead. And we, we often focus on, well, you need to tell them how bad it is, how gloomy it is. I'm starting to question the, que the, the idea that, that we need to communicate to them how bad things are because I'm starting to see more and more, it seems like people are starting to understand how bad things are. But it almost seems like they don't believe that it will be worth it. And so that's why I think the, the self-sufficiency, the, the gardening, uh, th there's the quote that he who plants seeds um, plants happiness, right? Because uh, gardening is happiness. And, and we find that all, you know, um, I'm, I'm doing my best out there with my garden. I was just out there just watering it just now. And I look at these trees that I've put in the ground. I look at the the, the zucchinis and the the habanero plants and uh, and the tomato plants, and I have hope for them. <laughs> and and they give me a, a joy. They give me a joy seeing um, the things that seem to be taking root so far. Hopefully, they don't die on me and and get, leave me disappointed. But how do we? 
how do we communicate hope to people? Because fear doesn't always drive people to the right action. Uh, fear can move you, but it can move you in the wrong direction. Uh, people who, who are afraid right now, who have lost connection, a lot of them are fleeing into drugs and alcohol and, and many other harmful things, right? That's not prepping, that's not being prepared, and that's not moving towards a more positive future, what happens when the whole grid comes crashing down? What happens when people go running to the store and they find no food? They're going to have to do a gut check because they're going to be facing some serious hard work and some hard times. I know, you warned them. You warned them. <laughs> and they should have listened to you. But they're going to find themselves in a very difficult situation and they're going to have questions of how and, and what to do but they're going to have to ask themselves a more fundamental reason of, is it going to be worth it? Now, when they get hungry, they're going to find a lot more motivation than they thought they had. But initially, at first, um, in, in disaster scenarios, in, in, in collapses of society, a lot of times, other, other societies have found a lot of hope and a lot of purpose in their family structures, their clans. In the United States, they're... they're there's been this destruction of community. It's like everybody is on their own. Most people don't know who their neighbors are, which is really kind of sad. They don't have friends and family that are right next door. They don't have people to lean on. With that, how many of them are actually going to decide to knuckle down and actually do the hard work to survive? We see people having meltdowns and and just losing their 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 cookies over the the craziest things out there. We see people walking off the job right and left, and, and maybe some of that's justified. But I, I I have never understood leaving a job before you have another job lined up. Like, I was taught differently than that. I was told, suck it up, buttercup. Start applying to other jobs, right? <laughs> don't, don't just jump work because what happens if something doesn't come through? We need to provide hope to people. And so a lot of people are out there like, I only have so much food. I, I don't have anything to share with other people. And I keep saying, you have so much to share. You have so much knowledge and wisdom. If you've done any of the work, you're going to be far ahead of other people and you're going to be able to provide wisdom and advice and counsel. And I want to add this to it. You're going to be able to provide hope to them. You need to look them dead in the eyes and say, you can do this. For thousands and thousands of years, your ancestors were able to suck it up and do this. You can do this too. I'm not saying you're not going to have to change. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. But you can adapt and you can overcome. If you provide zero goods, zero services other than providing hope to your community, you may still find yourself to be the center of a new community that is formed. Hope is a commodity that is becoming more scarce. There is a hope shortage. A lot of that is when we kicked God out of schools. We, we decided that it's a shame to be an American. We decided that all the ideals and principles that, that were bounded upon biblical principles, um, that, that, that they were old school and that they were outdated. We need to replace them with new and depressing uh, victim mentalities. That everybody's a victim and we need to, we need to just bask in our victimness. There's no hope in that. There's no hope for change in that. What hope do you have? What is it that drives you? If you have hope, I want you to dig deep, think it through, and try to figure out how you could possibly communicate that to other people. Because there's almost certainly people on your team, 
your family members, whoever else is going to be with you uh, through the hard times to come. Whether it's a depression, whether it's a recession, whether it's uh, the whole electric grid collapsing, whether it's a world war, hard times are coming. And what is going to drive you through that? And what is it that's going to drive the people in your community through that? Where there is no vision, people perish. Some people will choose that life is not worth living anymore. You absolutely certainly do not want anyone on your team, anyone in your family members, um, getting to the point where they decide that there is no hope, that it's better to quit. Hopefully you feel that same way about the people in your community at large. Because the same thing that drives somebody to quit and to take their own life may drive them the opposite direction to start taking other people's lives. Hope in a community is a powerful thing that can unify and, and give purpose and drive people to do the labor and the work that is going to take to rebuild society, to rebuild economies, rebuild supply chains. If your community can get back up on its feet, providing for its own through hard work and industry and through character and through great relationships, you're going you're gonna to be full of joy living in such a community. But if your community all around you is full of despair, they're going to be full of violence and theft and depression. And it will not be a joy to live in that community. Hope costs you spiritual capital. It won't cost you seeds. It won't cost you uh, uh, wheat berries. It won't cost you rice or beans. But it can save lives and can really move people out of a dark place. Now, that may mean that you need to give them a vision. Hey, hey. You need to start a garden, get your shovel out and start digging up your lawn, giving them some direction and saying, this is what you need to do. Get out there and get it done. You can do it. I believe in you. And maybe it might mean that you may provide them some seeds or it may be you telling them how to find their own seeds. There's ways of doing that. You can go up and harvest enough uh, dandelion seeds, rip up your whole lawn, and, and just sow dandelion seeds across your entire lawn if you're in the right climate for that. And you could basically just grow a whole crop on a lawn of just dandelions. And you can eat that. It might just keep you alive. Is that the most balanced diet out there? Uh, obviously not. But uh, people around the world have lived on such kind of food. So, friends, do you have hope? Do you have a vision? Can you communicate that vision? Can you communicate that hope to people on your team and people in your community? Because that may turn out to be the best commodity and the best survival item for both you and your team. If you like this video, you might want to check out this other video right up here. Otherwise, I will see you later. Steve Poplar, out.